Hello and welcome back. In the past video, I spoke about Python, I spoke about Atom, and I spoke generally about the need for um, a digital historian to kind of, or a digital humanist to kind of be familiar with Python, or at least comfortable with it. And if you're in this video, it means that you too probably have some sense of the same idea. In this video, we start kind of tackling the first half of the course, which is going to be looking at the ways in which Python stores data so that we can call it, operate with it, function with it, etc. And this video is not meant to give you a comprehensive um, list of all the different ways we do this in Python, nor is it meant to provide you a detailed discussion of each of the things mentioned in this video. Instead, I am merely trying to introduce you to some of the key concepts and ways in which we do this in Python. And if you notice over here, in later videos, in the next uh, six or so, I'm going to go through and talk about each of these different things, integers, floats, strings, lists, tuples, and dictionaries in far more depth in later videos. So for now, I want to talk about data. So what is data? Data is essentially just some piece of information. But does data actually provide any usefulness? The answer is no. In and of itself, data is entirely useless. This might seem crazy, but let me explain. Data is useless on its own. Data's utility comes in making it relational to some other piece of data. In other words, data's utility comes when we start structuring databases. And we're going to talk about databases in a later video in far more depth. We're not really going to be dealing with them here. Instead, we're going to talk in this video about how to uh, store data in Python and how to start making it relational through very specific objects. So how do we do this in Python? Well, in Python, there's a really one thing that you need to understand. Python is an object-oriented language. You're going to hear me say this multiple times throughout these videos, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining what this means right now, uh, because I think it'll distract from the overall purpose of this lecture, which is merely to introduce you to some of the key concepts of data. But understand that every single piece of information, or every single uh, thing that you create in Python, really functions as its own object. And that brings me to another point. The other key term you need to understand right now is this term variable. Now, you might be tempted to think of variables and objects when you first start off as being kind of the same thing. I did. They're actually very different. And again, I'm not going to go into depth about the difference in this video. For right now, I want you to think about variables as things that point to objects. Just get that concept down right now and I'll explain uh, very basically what these are. So the way in which you create a variable in Python is kind of like what I've done here. I've set a1 equal to the integer, the digit, 1. So the number 1. This means that if I want to use that variable or that uh, later in my code, I can simply hint uh, this. I can type out this function, print, this is very useful to understand and get to know early on because you're going to be using it every single day if you work with Python. Print, and you do an open parenthesis, type in what you want to have printed off in the output of Python, and a close parenthesis. That's very important. Open and close parenthesis around what you want to have printed off. And then what you're going to do is I'm going to run this code, and in Python or in Atom on Windows, it's Control Shift B, as in Bravo. You'll see it print off the number one down here in the output. And notice I have not typed in the number one, I have merely typed in A1. And that's because A1 is a pointer to uh, the number one. Here's why I state that uh, variables are merely pointers. So I'm going to create an object Y, and that is going to also print off the number one because I have created an object based on that variable. Again, I'm going to explain this in a lot more detail in a later lecture. I just wanted to get those two terms out there uh, fairly early on so that the viewer is not entirely lost when I start talking about variables and objects. For right now, think of them as quite similar, but a little different. So 
what kind of uh, objects or variables do we ha types of uh, variables do we have in Python? We have two overarching categories. There are mutable and immutable uh, variables or objects. What does this mean? Uh, it means that some of them are uh, changeable and some of them are unchangeable in memory. Mutable objects consist of things like lists and dictionaries. And I'm going to talk about these two in a little bit uh, later in this video and in a lot more detail in lectures six and seven. Immutable objects or, th or things that you can't change are things like strings, floats, integers, um, and tuples. And I'll explain this also in a bit. So that's what you need to understand. There's two overarching types of um, uh, objects or variables, and that's immutable and mutable. Now, there are two main types of numbers that you need to become very familiar with very early on, because if you don't, it will cause problems, I promise. It caused me problems when I started off with Python. The two major types of numbers are integers and floats. And I know what you might be thinking. These look remarkably similar. Aren't they just the same thing? No, they aren't. They are very, very different. Notice that integer uh, integers do not have a decimal place. Floats do. Uh, this is a major difference. To you or me, a human reading this, this might not seem like that big of a deal. But decimal places are fairly difficult for computers and programming languages to handle. And for this reason, Python has a different way of calling them and structuring them. And that's as a float. If your number does not have a decimal point, it functions as an integer. And when I talk about integers and floats in much more detail in my integers lecture four, um, uh, lecture number four in this series, I'm going to explain how you can kind of convert a float into an integer, etc., and vice versa. But for right now, just understand that integers and floats are both numbers, but both handled very, very differently. Another example of a um, immutable object is a string. Notice that a string is structured very differently. I am setting C1 and C2 equal to 1 spelled out and 2 spelled out. But notice that I have 1 with quotation marks around it. This is what's going to tell Python that this variable is a string. And a string is simply a list of characters. It can be numbers, it can be um, letters, it can be whatever you want. Now, these are the very base, there's other ways to do this, but these are very basic ways of kind of storing uh, data in Python. The way in which you make this data relational is by different types of objects. And these are uh, mutable lists, immutable tuples, and mutable dictionaries. So what are these, uh, these things? Well, a list, as you can probably tell and guess by the name, is an object that is structured from a grouping of other objects. So in this case, A1 and A2. So were I to print off D, I would see down here in my output, one and two. Now this is very important. Notice that a list is formed with an open and a close bracket. That is going to tell Python that this is a list, not a parenthesis as we see here with tuples, and not this squiggly parenthesis, which I don't know the name of that, I probably should learn it at some point, uh, but this squiggly parenthesis that uh, make a dictionary. Lists are brackets. That's very important. Don't mess this up. Now, what's useful about a list is that it's mutable. I can change this list in memory whenever I want to through a series of commands. I'm going to talk about those commands in lecture six. For right now, understand that a list can be changed. A tuple functions exactly like a list, except it functions as a singular object. In other words, it is an object that uh, Python reads as a single entity, not a series of entities. And because of that, a tuple is immutable. It cannot be changed. And I'm going to explain the difference, uh, why this is useful in a later video, but I will give you some sense of it right now. When we talk about functions in lecture 10, this is going to make more sense what I'm doing about to do. 
but this will demonstrate why a tuple is actually useful and why Python has them different, uh, provides two different types of lists. So in a function, you are simply writing neater code to actually perform a repeated tasks, uh, task that occurs in your code. I'm going to create a simple multiplication uh, formula. So we want to do a times, uh, let's just do two, and I want to return x. So there, there we go. And now when I run this code, I will do print multiple and I want to run the number two. All right, now let me explain this. So two is going to function in this uh, function as a. So wherever there's an a, this two is going to replace it. Uh, and if I run this, it should return that two times two is equal to four and it's going to return X and print it out down here because I told it to do just that. So we run print. Look at that four math works. Fantastic. Notice that it is returning uh, four down here in the output as an integer. That's great. It is an integer. That's what it should be returning to me. What however, would happen if I wanted to do a times four and return that as well. Well, I'm going to see what happens. Look down here. It is a tuple. How do I know it's a tuple? I know it's a tuple because it's an open and a closed parentheses, a list formed by a parentheses. Why is this significant? It is significant because a function in Python, and again, I'm going to explain this in lecture 10, a function in Python can only return a single variable. Tuples allow for a function to return multiple variables, but the object created by a tuple cannot be changed the way a list can. Now it is possible, I should make this clear right now, not to throw too much confusion at you uh, very early on, that within a tuple, you can have a list. So I could have a list of, uh, let's just say C1, and C2. And if I were to print this off, it, you would see it. Here, I'll do it for you. All right, here's something that's useful to know right now as well. Uh, down here, I was going to talk about this later, but I might as well do it now since I'm going to. Um, so I have comment out number 10. Comment out is a common way, a uh, common expression in programming. And in Atom, you hold control and you hit the backslash button. And what comment out does is it makes everything gray and it puts this ampersand before it. And what that tells uh, Python is that it needs to ignore this. You're commenting it out. And it gets that name because this is typically where you provide comments in your code, as I do here for lists, strings, floats, and integers. It tells Python not to read that line. So now I'm going to print E, and we should see right here a tuple in the output. I'll copy it, put it in here so it's a little bit bigger. We see this as the output. We see our uh, our floats 1.0 and 2.0, and our list within the tuple of uh, one string and two string. While a tuple cannot be changed in memory, within a tuple, a mutable object can be changed. This might sound confusing right now. I just wanted to explain to you that it's not as cut and dry as it might seem. I'm going to explain all of this in depth in lecture five on tuples. For right now, just think of a tuple as an immutable list. The final thing I have here is a dictionary formed by this wonderful squiggly line parentheses opener and closer. What do you notice about a dictionary though? You should notice that it has this, uh, this colon. If we print it off, this is what's going to, what it's going to look like. Once again, I'll copy and paste it right here. What do you see here? Well, you see a string one with a colon in between it and a integer one. Same thing here with two and two. This colon is making two pieces of data relational to one another. And this is going to be very important when you're working with data in Python. You will work a lot with dictionaries. You're also going to work a lot with lists and tuples. But dictionaries are very useful for making two pieces of information relatable to one another. So these are the main kinds of objects that you're going to be working with early on in Python. There are more. There are many more ways to store data in Python. And um, we're going to get to those in later videos. But for right now, spend some time 
get accustomed to Python, make some uh, variables, make some integer objects, make some floats, make some strings, make some lists, make some tuples, and make a dictionary or two. Get used to how these are structured. When you first start off, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to sometimes put a bracket for a dictionary and try to figure out why it's not uh, working the way it should be working. Take your time, learn how these things are structured, and play with it uh, for a little while. You're not going to break your computer by doing this. And what I encourage you to do is to work a little bit with this print function. Simply print things off. Uh, now you saw in here me create a function. We're not there yet. That's going to be lecture 10. For right now, just focus on printing variables and objects out. And if you do that, get comfortable with it. Join me in the next video, and we're going to talk a lot more about strings and specifically how to uh, manipulate strings, how to call strings, how to store strings, and how to um, really kind of work with them in much more nuanced ways than I was able to get in in this video. But that's all for right now. Hopefully you have found this somewhat useful as an introduction to data and ways of storing data in Python.